Hey, this is Anton Gano, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you're in an unfortunate position where you have to downsize your team. You got to lay some folks off. And your chief executive has asked you to decide who on your team gets to stay and who has to go. Now, I know you want this to be a very fair and objective process in order for you to make a decision because it's a very difficult decision. No leader wants to lose valuable team members, and everybody in your team is valuable. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in your team. No organization generally wants to downsize, but they might be forced to downsize because of the economy or because of changes in the business environment, or maybe automation and innovation has taken over responsibilities that used to be manned by a human. Whatever it is that, that contributes to the downsizing, it never feels good. See, downsizing impacts your community broadly. It, it affects the local economy. And it also is very disconcerting to your staff, to your team, and the morale inside of your organization. Sometimes when downsides happen, uh, other people quit. You lose other people because they just can't bear to continue working without the important people that they had around them before. The other people who stay behind, many times they walk around on eggshells looking over their shoulders, wondering if there's going to be a second round of downsizing and are they going to get caught up in it. So it's not a good environment. It actually is a very difficult environment for you as a leader to lead in. So the question is, if you've been asked to downsize your team, what factors do you consider or do you put on the table when you're thinking about which team member to downsize first? Well, Here's my quick framework for what you should think about as a leader. And it's not the normal framework that we hear all of the time. Framework I used to hear all the time is last hired is the first to be fired. So if you got to downsize, then you always go to the person who has the least amount of tenure in the organization and not the person that you've had on your team for 20 years. There is a school of thought that thinks that's the appropriate way to do a downsizing. I don't agree with that train of thought. This is where I would start if I was you in thinking about who to downsize on my team. Step one is to look at anybody on your team that is currently in a disciplinary process. Now, what do I mean disciplinary process? I mean, they have not performed well or they are generally toxic in your environment. They cause problems and have run-ins with other coworkers and they've just been hard to manage in general. And so you had to put them on a performance improvement plan or a behavioral modification plan of some sort because of their behavior at work. Those are the team members, whether they're the highest paid or your top producers are the ones that you should consider first. Because even if they are a top producer, if they create a toxic environment and they make other people feel bad around them, then you can guarantee that they're keeping everybody else around them from being a top producer. So you want to consider how do you remove these people from your organization? Those are the ones you want to look at first is the people who are in a disciplinary process or create a toxic environment. The second group of people that you would look at if you had to downsize are people who are not willing to learn. So what do I mean not willing to learn? Growth and development should be a part of every organization. Training and development should be something that you do inside your core business on a daily basis. So the question is, who are those team members that are always the last ones to complete their modules in your learning management system? Who's the team member who makes an excuse that I'm too busy to go to a conference, I'm too busy to learn, I'm too busy to buy into this workshop or to attend this retreat that you put together as a leader? The people on your team, you need them to be sharp and nimble and on the cutting edge of all of their business. But if you have someone on your team that refuse to listen, learn, and to grow themselves, and then won't even grow when you offer it to them, that's the second type of person, the second group of people that you would consider when you have to go through a downsize process. The third type of person that you may want to consider is the last hired is the first to be fired. And the reason why I, can, I carry that last is because you might be retooling your entire team. And you may have just brought on a recent hire who you think is a top-notch performer 
who is just getting their feet wet into the organization and you're now faced with this crisis. So do you really want to lose that team member who you brought on because they were so productive or because they were such a good get and leave someone who's been around longer but is not that productive? I would say you want to think long and hard about that. And that's why the category of the last hired first fired is what you should consider last. But focus on those toxic team members who are in performance um, improvement processes, the second group of people who are not really learners, because if they're not learners, then it's going to be hard for them to be leaders. And the reason why you need them to be leaders is because in a downsize process, your team is going to get asked to do more with less. And so you got to rely on people who are top performers, who people generally like, and most importantly, who are willing to learn and grow in the environment. And it doesn't matter if they've been there two months or two years or 20 years. You want the best people to stick in your organization. And those are the people that you don't want to lose if you can avoid it in a downsize process. So I want to thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day.